Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. Once again, this is Verbal Pick Radio. You can check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we're on the move. Got to give a shout out to my partner, Low Key uh, Gino. Uh, hitting them up with the R and B boys from the six Muhammad Two G. What's up, Marcus Mud in the film industry putting things down. Uh, uh, right now in the present, we're working on a documentary. Currently working on a script for a movie. Um, we got things on and popping in H Town. Uh, for all my people that's listening in uh, Mexico, and that jams my music in Mexico, I appreciate it. Uh, my first album, um, to to uh, not to my knowledge, I stumbled up on uh, the fact that a lot of it was being played in uh, Mexico, and I didn't know, uh, you know, I, since I didn't promote there, it was just shocking to see that uh, to to hear and see uh, people. Uh, listening to some songs I did back in 1999 through the early 2000s, you know, when I was in the music game. So, a uh, big shout out to Mexico. But uh, what led me to do this particular broadcast is the fact that my first encounter of black Mexicans was when I was younger and I had a friend. Uh, he was from Mexico. Uh, you know, good dude. Matter of fact, uh, the we couldn't. I mean, other than the accent, you know, he fit right in amongst the brothers, and it was like, you know, no thing. And you see that between the our brown Latino brothers and black people, it'd be like, you know, we get along like whatever. You know, it's all good. We got some of the same cultures or similarities. Hell. So anyway. You know, when I went went by his house, I seen, and we were younger, we were like, uh, I say like, about 11 or 12 years old. I seen this uh, elderly black lady uh, come out the back room. And I didn't think that never because I was shocked and I'm looking and I spoke. I said, hey, she said, hey, and that was it. And I haven't didn't see her again till months later. And uh, I'm outside of my bike. I was headed to his house. They were pulling up in this, uh, like, kind of Astro Van van. And uh, she gets out. I see her again, you know, getting groceries from They all go in the house, including himself. And they had her. She was getting the groceries out the back of the uh, the van. And I'm like, you know, actually, did she need some help or whatever? And I told him, hey, man, you going to help? To, you know, help this lady with the groceries. They like psh, whatever, right? And so later on, he told me that was his grandmother. I said, "Wait," and I'm like, "This is your grand?" I mean, because she was, you know, if you just going by skin tone, she was uh, darker than what they were, and her hair was uh, curly, like if she had a Jerry curl. And he was like, "Yeah, that's my grandmother." I'm like, what, man, why you do your grandmother like that when she's older than all of you all, right? But it did, I didn't dawn on me until I ran across another partner from Mexico, like, years later. We were in, we, matter of fact, we were in high school then, teenagers. Went by his crib. He had a black grandmother, but he didn't say nothing. And I said, man, that's your grandmother? He was like, yeah, how you know? I said, man, I had another a uh, Hispanic friend who hid his grandmother. I'm like, what's up with the, why y'all hiding the, uh, you know, your, 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 your family that's black, you know, and he never would give me a, a good answer. You know, it just shrugged it off. So as I got old and I'm running into, um, just studying the study of John Hortz and I'm studying, uh, Vicente Guerrero. Now, Vicente Guerrero, he fought against the Spain for independence in the early 19th century and later served as president of Mexico, coming to power in the coup. He was of afro Mestizos descent. He championed the cause of Mexico's common people 
and abolished slavery during his brief term as president. His execution in 1831 by the conservative government that ousted him in 1829 was a shock to the nations. And and now that part was coming from Wikipedia on Vicente Guerrero, and he was of Afro Mestizo. Now Mestizo is a uh, Indian and European mixture, and we Afro is the indigenous. But what what gets me today is when they try to make it seem like the only black influence that was on Mexico came from slaves that came from Africa to Mexico and not the Olmec, the black Olmecs who were the founders of the civilization in Mexico. Until this day, I'm not understanding why they do not. Now, they try to make it seem as though pre-Columbus, uh, they tried to make it seem as though the blacks, such as um, Zumba, uh, man, what's the, the well that came before the Mayflower? What's the brother's name? Uh, first name? I think it's Ganga Zumba, who was mighty. But they're trying to make it seem as though that. The Hispanics that mixed with the European Spaniards and who had gotten lighter was the indigenous uh, Mexicans. Not that who 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 the Africans who came over to the Americas uh, as slaves mixed with. The, and so they try to make it seem as though the indigenous Mexicans was the were the Mathisos, when the Mathisos was a mixture. What happened was the Africans who came over here uh, with the, during the slave trade mixed with the descendants or the people of the old mix, which was black also. So you just had two cultures mixing, and they wasn't about skin color. The, the lighter skin didn't come about until the, uh, the, the, the Spaniards, the Europeans came and conquered and mixed in and separated the indigenous Mexicans who were part of that land mass. Uh, they mixed with them. And then from that mixture, they mixed with the Africans. But... But but that's why you have similar cultures. That's why you can have somebody from Cameroon who says that he can come here and find um, the language that they speak in the Cameroon in Africa similar to the language of the Native Americans through the migration. But the false, the false narrative is the fact that the Europeans who mixed in with the uh, indigenous uh, Mexicans and became lighter were, were the indigenous. And yes, you, you have part indigenous, part European. But before the part European, when it was indigenous, they were black. And so uh, what gets me today, even when the scholars talk about the blacks in Mexico, they never want to mention the fact that uh, they already were heavily, heavily melanated people in the beginning. So you had heavy melanated people uh, that were uh, native or indigenous to Mexico mixed with the heavy melanated people from Africa. And so in towns like Veracruz, uh, they'll celebrate Gaspar Yanga or Yanga 
and you have the people, and especially in watching the uh, the Lewis Gates series, I believe it's the, the grandmother in the closet, uh, which was the inspiration for this particular broadcast, because I wit I I've witnessed it personally, um, is the fact that, and like he said, for every family, Mexican family, there's a black person in it. In that bloodline somewhere, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, wipe it out through uh, Spaniard European mixture because you got to remember too. Some of some of them would say, "Well, I don't call myself black. I call myself Morenos or Morenos from the Moors, which were from the Black Moors who conquered Spain." And mixed in with the Spaniards. And true, you could say some of that mixture of that mixed in with some of the Spaniards traveled to Mexico and mixed in with the indigenous people in Mexico. You could say, okay, yeah, that's true. But what I'm saying is that don't be ashamed of your origin. Because without that origin, you wouldn't exist. Meaning, how you're going to hate on where you come from to please people who don't like you anyway. It doesn't make sense. And then, the the other thing about that is, is that, um, the, and the funny part is that, some of the lighter skinned Hispanics took on the same attitude as some of the lighter skinned blacks against the darker skinned blacks because of the religion, because of the white Jesus. They, they went through it too. The, they felt as though the closer you were to white or light skin, the closer you were to heaven or being God-like. They fell for the narrative, too. And when you travel through, I don't care where you go on the continent, you're going to see poor light-skinned folk. light skin didn't save them. Poor black-skinned folks. Black skin didn't save them. You're going to see all of that, economic-wise. Two poor folk, one light, one dark, and they fighting amongst each other. Who closer to God? One saying, I'm closer because I got more white blood in, than you. And when, when, and, and when that white blood slaves both of y'all, it's just ridiculous to hear the argument. Or And I've been waiting to see some benefit from it. But don't deny your origin, you know, and and speak more. Speak more of the greats, you know. I be hearing them talk about a lot of. I hear them talking about uh, Pancho Villa and Zapata, who were both for the same cause. They say Zapata was more educated. Pancho Villa was more. From the streets, like they we say today, and some people took more to Zapata, some people took more to Pancho Villa. They say that, but they never really met. They had one encounter, and this coming from my partner, my partner Roy, was telling me that they had one encounter. It lasted for thirty minutes, but no one knew what those two talked about. It's almost like uh, Malcolm and Martin. Zapata and um, Pancho Villa. But the reason why this is important is because a lot of blacks that's from Texas uh, uh, was also uh, can trace their family history back when Texas was Mexico and beyond. Who's always been here before with even Texas from generations. So 
So that's why you will see. That's why sometimes, even I had it happen to me at one time. You will see um, some Hispanics who just came to uh, Texas, Houston, and they'll come up to you and start speaking Spanish to you because you look like uh, somebody from their country that, like, you should know this Spanish. You know what I mean? And you like, I don't, you know, until they learn the history. Then they learn the history. Oh, you were, okay, you, you've been over here and you took on European wave and the whole slavery thing and whatnot. And then they understand, okay, uh, so they don't, so they'll give you a word. And uh, if then they, you know, if they, once they know you don't know Spanish, then they kind of, okay, you know, they group you in, in a sense or whatever. But, but in their mindset, you remind them of back home. They come to you looking for help, and you don't know the language. So there's no communication. So it's something in that also that we got to figure out. I'm just laying down. I'm just uh, throwing up the alley-oop. Somebody else is going to come in and slam dunk it. I'm just throwing the alley-oop at the alley-oop up in the air like my partner Rod Williams would say. He'd tell me, Black, just throw the alley-oop. I'm going to come through, man. I'm going to slam dunk it. Just throw it up. I got it. You know what I mean? So basically, that's what we're doing here, Verbal Prick Radio. Or uh, one of my other partners, one of the other sisters, they'll take you further. I'm just throwing the alley-oop, alley-oop up in the air. You know? But, uh, yo, yeah, man, we, this this thing has to be discussed. You know, because, um, like Brother Rob Muhammad says, connect the dots. It's a... There's some dots out there that needs to be connected that we missing. Things that make you go, mm, like our senior used to say. Something out there that's going on. But uh, uh, truly, indeed, look into uh, Vicente Guerrero. And Vicente Guerrero, he abolished slavery. And he was he was black. He was a black mathesos. One side was uh, Indian and European mix, and the other side was indigenous black. That's why they called him the Afro Mathesos. And the Afro part don't necessarily just mean Africa. They could Afro could be from the old mix. Afro could be from the old mix who were the founders of the civilizations in Mexico. You got now we got to tie in the old mix to Africa. Did the did this did the um old mix and when did they migrate if when did they migrate from Africa to the Americas or to me, to the Mexican or to the uh, Mexico's uh, uh geography landmass when did they come to that particular part? And spread and what tribe that they come from at Old Mex, as we know that the Old Mex also left Mexico and they traveled through the Americas, through Texas, through Louisiana, they traveled up through Mississippi, settled in Mississippi, and now you have the Washitals, uh, who will explain that part. You know, through Louisiana and and through uh, Monroe, Louisiana. So, you know, that's a history. That has to be discussed. Some names that you all have to go and study. Because John Horse also, when he left the Americas, he also went to um, uh, Mexico and was a general as well uh, uh, at that time. And I think Vicente Guerrero was the second president of Mexico. Black dude. You got to know John uh, John Horse. You got to understand Matza Musa, who some say was Montezuma, who came to the Americas. You got to know, uh, you got to study Gaspar Yanga. You have to study um, uh, my man, uh, Zumba. Ganga Zumba, G A N G A. Uh, Z U M B A. You gotta study that brother. Tied to Mexico. Uh, who else? Yeah, uh, the conversation that Montezuma and Cortez had, and Montezuma uh, 
or was saying how his forefathers was traveling from Africa to uh, the Americas long before Columbus. Long before Columbus. Uh, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, man, that needs to be discussed. This Verbal Pig Radio, I'm your host, Cole Black, C O L B L A C. Um, check me out. Just Google the name. Um, this what we're doing here is not about uh, looking for anyone's finances. You know, although if you feel a need and you want to donate, uh, go to cdbaby.com, get a song until we can put up a donation uh, button or page or something like that. I don't know how that's going to take out in the future, but the main thing is just getting the information up. You know, um, uh, some of the things that we use to get the information out and things that um, has to be bought to uh, get information out to you all on a different perspective. And and not stepping on anyone's toes, and I'm I don't get involved in the uh, the debates and beefs that goes on between other black people, because I firmly believe that whatever method, if you have love in your heart for people, then whatever method you use it, that comes forth from that love is sufficient. And will ha- have an effect to lead things into a uh, positive perspective or a positive place. So I don't get involved in uh, uh, criticizing another person's method on how they feel that they can right or wrong because when you care about humanity you would do something out there to stop the injustice stop the violence you don't if you if you if you see a uh, humanity within yourself then you'll see humanity within others and you, whether you whether you give your voice uh your time if you're an artist you might play some music you might give your money the uh, donation you might give your time you might lend your voice there's so many things that you can do and that people do uh, and through different uh, methods. And who am I to criticize and judge their method or whatnot or how they do it uh, from their own scope or from their own capabilities of uh, of the or their own limitations? That this a hey, I'm limited. I might have a limited resource, but I do care about uh, the people and what's going on. So out of my limited resource, this is what I can produce right now until I build up and then I can, you know, take it a step further. But it's still, I'm I'm, I'm throwing a punch. You know what I mean? I'm still throwing something out there. I, I might don't have the big, you know what I'm saying, uh, tanks and whatnot, but I throw a rock. You know what I mean? I guess that's basically what I'm saying and using it in a metaphoric sense. You know, uh, if that's all you can do, somebody appreciate that. You know what I mean? They like, thank you, because if, hell, if you ain't throw that damn rock there, they would have got me. So I'm just saying that in, in the sense of uh, if you see injustice, the people who take the pictures on their cell phones, the people who uh, uh, just stand out with a sign saying uh, uh, justice, no peace. Uh, the people who post on Facebook uh, saying, hey, man, we got to stop the police brutality. These are human beings. You know, the people who protested the uh, Mario Woods, you don't shoot a human being down like that, you know, in broad daylight. That's injustice. So for everybody that's out there that's putting in work, that's uh, doing it from their scope, of their capabilities. We appreciate it. This Verbal Pick Radio, and we out.